getting ready to plan our Florida trip from uh, northern Georgia. And as many of you are uh, getting ready for this camping season, dewinterizing and whatnot, sometimes this is a little overlooked. We're going to be doing the wheel bearings. And I know you can put the Zerk fitting right here and you can essentially push the old grease out and put the new grease in and be good to go. But in the beginning of the season, I think it's important that uh, you inspect and maintain your, your tires and your brakes as well as your wheel bearings. So why not just take that extra 20, 30 minutes, take the tire off, get these inspected, get these uh, repacked, and just have that peace of mind. So that's what we're gonna to do today. Kind of show you just a quick and dirty way of doing it. Um, I don't need to show you how to take off a tire, I hope. So I already took it off and it's over there. So there is a tire with this, but I think we just get to the important pieces of this, this little project. Messy project, so make sure you have plenty of paper towels, lots and lots of gloves, and an array of tools that I'll show you right now. So, like I mentioned, here's uh, some of the tools and uh, materials that I use. Paper towels. Uh, this right here. The socket adapter and uh, high impact socket. To take that off after you loosen it with this is a lifesaver. Some good gloves. Channel lock pliers. Get off that big nut. Great cleaner, rubber mallet, grease, bearing packer, because we're not going to use the grease gun, and new seals. Gotta have, gotta have new seals. These are from O'Reilly's uh, for the Dexter, and that's the part number right there 412920. Right? There you go. I think these are about seven bucks and some change a piece. Make sure you ask for four. And one out of the box. And uh, so let's get to this little project. Like I mentioned before, there is an easier way of doing this. You would pop this little piece off here. As you can see right in there, it comes out. And then you would take this piece off here, just boot. It insert the zerk fitting and then put your grease in there and I think it's about 14 or 10 ounces per wheel if I remember correctly and wait for the grease the old grease to come out pop that back on put this back on you're good to go that might be okay for uh, in between packing the bearings but we're gonna do it this way Scenes out, it's the beginning of the season, get it right, make it, make it look good, make sure it looks good. Just do an inspection, you know, as you go through. Another thing you want to do that I hear is you want to spin this a little bit and just hear just a little bit of friction. And make sure that the, the drum and the pads are coming into some sort of contact and there's not a significant gap. So once you do that, you want to take this off right here. Set that aside. Make sure you got a nice clean surface to work with. I'm, I have a rubber pad down here and then a plastic lid off an old tub. You don't want any dirt or sand or anything else getting in your pieces here. Take this off. Crown cap. Now this should be finger tight. It should never be over tightened. Um, this is what the channel lock pliers are for because what you're going to do is you're going to tighten it really tight with the pliers, back it off a turn, and then hand tighten it back. You don't want to over tighten it and squishing your bearings in there. So let's go ahead and take that off. Set that aside. 
next part, kind of break this out a little bit. You'll see the washer. It's right there. It's got that flat side, it only goes on one way. As you see the bolt, it's right here, matches up with the flat side of the washer, so it only goes on that one way. Set that aside. bearing. It's not a lot of grease on this. Let me check for any pits, any foreign material. Don't see any in there. Looks like we're going to be okay. Alright. Next, we're going to pull this off, nice and easy, grab right both hands, all right, and there she be. Pretty dirty. Pads don't look bad at all. You see right there, and here, not bad at all. Magnet. It's okay. So next is to take out the inner bearing and seal. Let's do that. That'll look good. No pits. No foreign material. Just dirty grease. There's the new one. And the indented part, the ridge here, that goes down. This is where your bearing seats, right in there. This is the top part that goes in here like that. So, as you can see, there's a reason why you want to get a new seal. This entire thing is gone. This whole seal is completely eaten away. So it did its job. Little seven dollar replacement can cost you or save you hundreds, hundreds of dollars. The headaches it can potentially ruin your trip. You don't want that. You don't want grease getting up into these drums because then you're not gonna be able to stop. Get some of this grease off of here first before we clean it. As much soft as we can. And here as well. Look good. So let's clean up the brakes. Okay, here comes the fun part. Now you can definitely do this by hand if you wanted to. You know, you, they show you the palm method and brushing it in there, but that's fine. Do what you want. But uh, the handy little device here basically just plunges the, it right down into the grease. 
pull it out, unscrew it. It even has a zerk fitting on there if you wanted to utilize that, push it up and through. But basically, just push this into there. That on top, and just push it down. And this is going to come up into the center of that, into here, and then push out all the old grease and then the, the new grease. It's nice and easy. You'll see it come up. Just like that. Just like that. Hemi. Pop this off. Put that into the cap. Dig out the dig out the freshly coated bearing. There you go. There you go. Got all that other, the old stuff out of there. You got a freshly packed bearing. And that, it's seated right there. There you go. All good and coated. Like that. The new seal and on top. Make sure that's completely flat and even. And yeah, I know there are tools for that, but uh, I don't need one more thing to lose. It's got to be gentle. Use some common sense. All right, little guy in there. Again, you need to screw it down. It's just a, that's just to grab the back plate and pull it out because there's so much suction in there. You wouldn't be able to get it out. So again. Push it all the way down. Here we go. There. Alright. Here's that. Put that in there. And we're gonna leave that little guy in there for now. Okay, so we got our seal in. We got our bearings packed. It's time to get this and our brakes cleaned. Everything looks good, so let's hop this back together. Right, put that back in there, and again, just put it all back the way it was. Put everything down, make sure it all looks good. It only goes on one way. The flat side goes right under there. Spindle, and then this nut. This thing will not be over tightened. And it goes against everything you were taught about keeping things on together. But that's just the way it works, because you don't want to bind up your bearing. It kind of defeats the purpose of, unless you want to test out how 
good this grease is. You don't want to do that. And I know there's a specific torque for this. So it's torqued on there pretty good right now. I'm going to back it off, quarter turn, and then back and tighten. So what it's doing is it's compressing it, seating it, you're backing it off so there, it's not pushing into it, giving it just enough room to spin. You should still hear that minimal contact with the pads. Next, call it the crown. Looks like a the castle because it looks like a castle. Fun fact: got to learn something new every day, right? Anyway, again, it's going to go on one way. That tab goes right on the flat portion, of the spindle, and in between the nut. It seats right there. Doesn't go anywhere else. Once that's in there, everything looks good. Pop that right back on there. A little persuasion device. And that's it. Good peace of mind. Going down the road, you know your your brakes are good, they're clean, fresh bearings, one less thing to worry about, one less thing to ruin your trip. Um, one other thing you may want to do while you're under here is some of these have what, what are called wet bolts. These don't. What it would have is a zerk fitting on the back of this, and it would lubricate, grease these points here. And that's probably why you hear when a lot of these trailers are coming into the park that creaking and cracking and smacking and like the thing's falling apart. It's because of these. These little points right here. So if yours does have that, mine does not, you may want to get a uh, your grease gun and come back here and, and lube them up. Eliminate some of that, that mess. But everything else under here looks pretty good. Um, no cracks, no wear, everything looks good. I'm not going to show you how to put the tire back on. I hope you know how to do that because if you don't, you don't need to do this. All right, um, there'll be more. There are other uh, maintenance upgrades that we're going to be doing before we go on a trip because we want to have a fun trip and we want to have a good time and not have to worry about things breaking down. Also, too, when you, when you have your tire off, when you take it off by yourself, uh, do some inspections on it. Make sure there's nothing stuck in the treads. Make sure the treads look okay. You don't have any cracks. Uh, and again, this takes about 20, 30 minutes. Hope that uh, helped you all. And uh, see you out there in the trails, in parks, in highways, and rest stops, in gas stations where you don't fit. And fast food places where you you don't fit. See out there.